welcome to this lecture on CASES uh, in the context of virtual memory. So when we route our programs uh, and then let's say use a variable and then try to print the address of that variable, we actually get a virtual address, which is not the address that is uh, mapped in our physical memory or DRAM. So uh, the notion of uh, virtual memory or the virtual address uh, provides uh, illusion uh, from, from uh, from the perspective of um, isolation and uh, protection of uh, data among multiple processes. And it also helps in uh, running programs that demand uh, more than uh, the DRAM capacity. Uh, although in the modern world, uh, DRAM capacity is pretty huge, uh, but, but still virtual memory has its uh, own utility in terms of isolation that provides uh, uh, various degrees of uh, multiprogramming. So, so far we discussed about uh, CAS hierarchy where the CAS uh, gets an address and that address is same as uh, the address that is mapped to the DRAM, which is nothing but the physical address. But in real world, uh, the processor actually sends a virtual address and there is a black box that converts this virtual address to physical address. So this lecture is not about uh, virtual memory and how virtual memory is implemented. Uh, rather, we will discuss about how memory hierarchy is uh, designed keeping uh, uh, virtual address in mind. So this is the illusion that I was talking about. Let's say we have two different processes, two different softwares or applications, and even if they use uh, the same variable in their program and they may get the same address when you do a, a printer for their addresses, but finally they are actually mapped to two different locations in DRAM, right? So you, you may say that the virtual address one is equal to virtual address two for this particular variable, but uh, they actually uh, occupy different amounts of uh, space in the actual data. So OS is actually the boss who uh, maintains the mapping from a virtual address to physical address in the form of a page. So the page uh, size will be uh, in the form of KBs or in the modern servers, it can go up to MBs and GBs. So a page is nothing but a contiguous chunk of uh, uh, addresses that, that uh, we, we can uh, think of as a unit of uh, translation uh, that, that is used by the OS. And uh, similar to other data structure, as it's a software data structure, it is stored in uh, the primary memory, right? And what we have to do is whenever we get a load uh, that is actually coming from the processor, we have to go through this page table to get the corresponding physical page, and then we'll actually go for the data which is present in that uh, physical page, right? So uh, the process of uh, this translation from uh, virtual address to physical address is actually known as the address translation. So we are not going for the data, we are just trying to find out the physical page. Once we get the physical page, we'll go to the corresponding physical address and then get the data. So in the modern processors, you will find that the page table is implemented as a multi-level page table because of capacity uh, issue. Otherwise, the page table itself will demand GBs of uh, space. And it's a, a kind of a Redix tree implementation where uh, you have multiple labels and then the, each label has multiple entries, right? So the root of this particular tree or this page table is actually pointed by a register called CR3 that is maintained by the OS. Remember, this is actually a physical address, okay? It's not a virtual address. This particular register gives the root of page table, which is stored in DRAM, so it should be a physical address. And then once we get that uh, base address, we start extracting uh, bits from our virtual address. So here I'm uh, showing a 48-bit virtual address, and uh, we have a four-level page table. So, and then each level has five tool entries, so you can assume these are nine-bit, uh, chunks. So we extract these nine bits, go to a particular uh, index in the uh, uh, first level page table, and that will demand a DRAM access. Once we uh, get that, we actually go to DRAM and get the particular content of uh, that particular address. That will give the base address for the uh, next level, next level in the page table, right? Once we go there, again, we go and extract the nine bits, uh, find out what's the offset from the base uh, in that particular table, and access DRAM again. So this process continues uh, 
and then finally we actually uh, get a physical page after accessing DRAM uh, four times right so as you can see uh, even just to get address translation done we are accessing DRAM four times and uh, this address uh, translation process will also go through cache hierarchy. So we'll actually uh, look for this translations in caches. If it is not there, then only we'll go to uh, the DRAM. Okay. So to mitigate this uh, page table walk latency, uh, what we can do is we can have a cache that can store these translations. So we can actually uh, store these mappings, uh, which are uh, recently used. Uh, in a buffer called uh, TLB, which is implemented uh, similar to our uh, caches. Okay, so th this will be the new uh, processor pipeline where uh, before uh, the instruction cache, now there will be instruction TLB. And if we get a TLB miss, we have to go to page. If we get a page fault, then then uh, we have to handle that uh, using a page fault handler. Similarly, in the memory stage, uh, before going to the data cache, we should go for the data TLB, get a physical address, and uh, similar kind of issues can happen at the memory stage also. So, where exactly these structures are placed, if we look at our context of uh, memory hierarchy, so here I am showing uh, a typical uh, multi core processor with four cores. Each of them have their own private caches. We will uh, discuss about it in the next uh, lecture itself. And the important thing to notice here is even we have multi levels of TLBs. So this is uh, the L1 TLB, this is the L2 TLB. And once you get a miss in this TLBs, the page table walker starts walking the page table. There are other uh, caches known as the MMU caches, which stores the intermediate uh, translations of uh, different page tables that I'm not showing here. But, but this will be a typical uh, hierarchy uh, of uh, TLBs and caches. Remember, uh, there is no connection between L2 CAS and L2 TLB and L1 CAS and L1 TLB. Okay, so the, the structures are independent of each other. On an address translation request, you go for uh, L1 TLB and then L2 TLB and then go for page table locker. Once you get the translation done and update your TLB, then you go for the data. Right, so we should not be confused with. Uh, uh, the, the location of this TLBs with the uh, data caches. So uh, this will be the complete picture if you want to put uh, CR3 uh, into the context and the page table walker. Uh, please, please go through it and then if you uh, still don't get it then then uh, ask it on Piaja. But it's pretty uh, straightforward what we have done is we have just added uh, this four things uh, for translation. And this is our memory controller that we haven't explored yet. And this is our off-chip uh, data, okay? So now uh, coming to the caches, uh, caches can be actually of uh, various kinds with the notion of uh, this virtual world, right? So what we can have is we can have caches that use just physical address only. That means there's a TLB before we access the cache and the caches always get the physical address. We can also have, uh, virtual cache where the CPU directly provides the virtual address and cache response to the virtual address and then, then uh, for rest of the hierarchy you may uh, use the TLB and uh, go for a physical address or you can have a combination of uh, virtual and physical address and then try to access TLB and caches uh, concurrently okay so let's look at what are the problems that we may face when uh, we, we have uh, two different uh, virtual uh, pages uh, from uh, uh, that are actually uh, mapped uh, at two different locations in the uh, page table, but eventually if they are mapping into the uh, same uh, physical address, right? So if we are uh, using a virtual cache, right? So this will be two different cache lines, right? So this virtual address one will be one tag, virtual address two will be another tag. And even though they are actually mapped to the same uh, physical address, we are storing the data twice in two different locations of the cache. So this is actually a synonym problem, which, which uh, uh, kind of comes when two different uh, virtual addresses are actually mapped to the same uh, physical address, right? And then the write to one of them can, uh, actually create uh, uh, multiple issues right De depending on how how are you accessing which process is writing or overwriting right 
and obviously if you're if you're updating a particular location here let's say uh, x belongs to uh, this particular uh, process 2 and it has updated x equal to 2 uh, x equal to 10 uh, that won't be visible to uh, this particular uh, cache line because we are using virtual address for, for our caching right but eventually they are actually sharing the same uh, data structure or same variable right so they, it should be visible right so the general solution for uh, this, this problem is you kind of use direct map cache so that uh, these two will actually uh, create conflicts with each other and eventually only one will be uh, there in the cache. The other extreme uh, problem is the homonym problem where a single virtual address, uh, the example that I have given, uh, can generate different physical addresses. Right. So remember these page tables are actually per process based and, and uh, it may happen that uh, a given virtual address is actually generating multiple physical addresses, right? Uh, the example that I have given in the initial slide. So what you can do is you can actually add uh, something called an address space ID or a process ID uh, for, uh, along with your tag. So you can have AS ID for, for each uh, cache line. So in that way, it will uh, differentiate uh, a cache line uh, that is belong to a particular process and then and, and you will be able to differentiate it at the caches, right? So, but but these are kind of costly solutions or what you can do is you should use physical tags even if you uh, go for let's say virtual indexing. Uh, if you can uh, translate your tag portion of address, get the physical tag and then uh, store that in your tag array, then uh, this problem will be uh, solved. So, so these are the two uh, crucial problems uh, uh, in the world of uh, virtual memory when we talk about the cache hierarchy, the synonym and the, the, the homonym problem, okay? Uh, so now, now let's look at some of the design issues. So uh, here I'm talking about uh, a VIPT cache, which is nothing but a virtually indexed and physically tagged cache, okay? So this is uh, virtually indexed and physically tagged okay so uh, remember when we uh, translate our virtual address to physical address we ignore the lower bits the lower uh, let's say the 12 bits assuming we are talking about a 4 kb page so the lower 12 bits don't participate in the uh, translation from virtual uh, address to physical address okay so as long as our indexing is actually coming from uh, the page offset bits, then we are kind of okay with it, all right? We can actually go for uh, this VIPT cache without having any synonym or homonym problem, right? Uh, but but the moment we cross these bits, then the problem will come. So so let, let's see how. So for example, uh, our uh, index bits is actually crossing the page offset. So let's say this is 12 bit, right? So that means it's a 4 KB boundary. But the number of uh, sets that we have is uh, so many that it's actually crossing uh, the 12 bits from the uh, uh, address point of view. So what can happen now is, so these are the extra bits that, that may uh, create problem. The problem that we have already talked about, right? And so that's why you will find that the L1 caches are uh, actually pretty small in size if they are going for the virtually indexed uh, uh, physically tagged cache, which is actually the current uh, trend in the industry. Uh, most of the process you will find they are using a virtually indexed physically tagged cache. And what happens in a virtually indexed physical tag is you take the index bit from the virtual address. There is no need of translation go for a particular set number right uh, and at the same time you go to tlb and get your tag right so once you get a uh, translation uh, hit from uh, your tlb you get a physical uh, tag right so finally w by the time you are done with the indexing you are also done with uh, the tlb both of them are actually small in structure so the latency will be uh, pretty less Finally, you check whether the tag is actually matching and then based on that, you declare a hit or a miss, right? So you can talk about all other possibilities like PIPT cache, which is uh, the case uh, that we have discussed so far, physically indexed, physically tagged. We discussed about virtually indexed, uh, physically tagged cache. 
can you think about physically indexed virtually tagged uh, does it make sense uh, think about it right so in summary if we uh, go for uh, completely virtual cache it will be fastest there is no need of translation no need to go to tlb but you will get uh, synonym or homonym problem in the vipt caches uh, assuming uh, your, your cache size and then the indexing bits are within the page offset then uh, mostly you won't get any issue and then that's why it's uh, used in the l1 uh, caches pipt it doesn't make sense and uh, pipt we have already discussed about it right so with this uh, what i would suggest is you go through this link so this is about a recent micro architecture from intel called sonico and uh, this link provides the detail about uh, the tlb size the capacity the cache size so you'll be able to correlate whatever we are discussing uh, as part of this course and correlate with the real world. And uh, at the end of the day, you should not think that whatever we are uh, reading or studying, these are kind of outdated. So this is a link that may help you. So with that, uh, I'll stop here. Thank you.